so hello everybody. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Anthony Tadler from London. Uh, Anthony is a lecturer in our master's program leadership and uh, he has a very interesting CV. Anthony, may I ask you to introduce yourself? Of, of course, of course. And I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Thanks, Lutz. Uh, I'm, um, well, I, just to go, I guess, from the start, uh, um, after school, I, I, my, my working uh, career has gone in some interesting different directions. After, after school, I, um, I got a scholarship to go to New York to, to study at a drama school there. And so I, I went and studied uh, acting, and, and that's what I did in my early mid-twenties. I did quite a lot of theatre and some film. Uh, and I really, really loved the experience, and um, I think it was very useful in terms of helping me with my, uh, well, being able to communicate with people, but also to take on different perspectives, different characters, and, and so forth. Then in my uh, mid-twenties, uh, I was still enjoying acting, but slowly but surely I was uh, seeing the world around me, and, and the war in Iraq was about to happen, and I really, really wanted to understand it, so I, I would perhaps go, go on a demonstration, but then I want to go even further and actually see what the reasons behind it, to, to understand things on, on perhaps a, a deeper, more theoretical level. So I decided to formalise that and I, I went to university and I, and I studied politics and international relations for my undergraduate. And in the meantime I was working for one or two non-governmental organisations as a researcher. Uh, and then I ended up uh, deciding to take a master's because I felt to go even further with the subject, the master's would be very useful. So I took a, an MSc at University College London in uh, Global Governance and Ethics. Um, and then I ended up working for a think tank which specialised uh, on the Middle East and Afghanistan. And it specialised on things like political economy, but in particular um, governance, security and conflict resolution. And I had the experience last year of... Um, well, no, it's now two years ago now, of going to Afghanistan and doing a lot of uh, interviews, but not interviews just with the, let's say, the local elites, with, with people on the streets in, in the capital, Kabul, and trying to find out key important things in their lives, like what they think of the West, what they think of the Taliban, what they think of Pakistan, and, and these sorts of things. And, and it was a fascinating experience. And so my working life has gone in, in many different directions, and yes, it's, it's been very interesting for that. And I think the original thing of acting uh, has, has been very useful and it's also, I find it's useful now as a lecturer here because I've had these different uh, also academic experiences but by combining them together it's really great when, when you have to communicate with students and try to impart uh, knowledge and information to be able to stand up and, and say it is, is uh, useful when, when you've had some sort of background like that. Okay, you're uh, lecturing here in two master modules. Yes, yes. Uh, one is evolutionary system, yes. uh, the other one uh, is structuration. Yes. And can you tell me a little what you are doing there with the students? Of course. Um, we tend to have, I mean, structuration is looking at, without necessarily going too much into the details of the subject, because, it's, because each week it gets further, deeper and deeper in a sense, but structuration, we're looking at agency and structure. Mm -hmm. An agency consists of, of many things, but you can say it's always an, the, an individual unit. So it could be you or I as the individual, or it could be uh, an organisation, a company, and even a government. And that individual unit, how it acts within the structure, mm -hmm. how it acts within the system. So, for example, uh, I, I, I'm working here within the system. I have to follow the certain rules and regulations of the university. I have to present, uh, hopefully, interesting and, and educationally stimulating lectures. And I have to do that to be part of this university. And a, a, comp a company, or let's take an example of a government... So let's say the German government, whether it's talking about the European Union or, or talking about uh, world trade or, or talking about security responsibilities, whatever it is, Germany has to work within the system, and in this case it's the international system, so the structure of, the, of, of working within that. And what sort of like uh, influence or, or control or power that uh, an individual unit has, and how much are we structured by what we do in, in whether it's our everyday life or in the ca case of a company or government in, 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 in general, how much they're constrained or enabled to do what they do. Um, and, and the course itself, what I tend to do, I tend to start by looking at a certain important social science theoretical framework so I'll, I'll, I'll do, let's say, 45 minutes of, of lecturing on it and looking how it fits in to, let's say, leadership. And, and that could be, so looking, understanding rational choice. We did this this week, for example. 
And rational choice theory uh, is one of these very, very dominant paradigms in the social sciences. Whatever you think of it, whether you think it's, it's uh, useful analytically or not, it's very dominant, and it's a lot how business and government leaders see the world. So to take an example, they, they would use things like cost-benefit analysis. So, so whenever you take a decision, as a government official, as a business leader, or just you or I in our everyday lives, or as academics, we have to weigh up the decisions. So, uh, whatever decision I'm going to take, uh, would it benefit me more, or will, it, will there be more costs? And so these sorts of things I, we, we talk about, and then from there we do lots of case studies, case studies of particular companies or organisations and how they have to work within the marketplace, or in the case, because I have a particular interest also in international relations, how, how nation states, governments have to interact with, within the international structure. And I think what's quite nice for the students is they get a little bit of variety in that sense. We look at business topics, but we also look at... Um, Yes, political topics, so it's quite varied, because I, I think leadership and management is not just purely business. I mean, of course, I it's, an, it's an important factor, and I acknowledge that a lot of people, will, 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 when they associate it, they think of it that way. But it's something that's more than just that, and it's many different areas, and, and the political area, the social area, and it, perhaps one could even say in our personal lives, we have to, we have to be have to clear, constructive, and, and so all of these different areas... Uh, I like to involve not just purely business. Okay, thank you. And uh, when we are talking about leadership education yes. here, and uh, staging and acting are, of course, core concepts in leadership. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Um, well, the the important. I mean, there are important aspects that, that I that uh, many great leaders have, or, or or just someone who's who's good at what they do in terms of managing a, a, an organisation or managing a, a team. Being able to communicate is first and foremost an important skill, and so being able to actually look at someone and, and talk with them and listen to them and, and really try to communicate what it is that you want to communicate. And, and perhaps even in this case, for example, I want to persuade you of, of something that I'm uh, trying to tell you about. So I want to persuade you that my structuration module is the most interesting module in the, the whole of the university or, or in the whole of the world. It and is. I, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll give you a check after this. Uh, but but so so there's so there's that, and and that's the point. It's it's being able to actually really to communicate and and to to really try to to bring out all all let's say the persuasive abilities that you have. And and I think when you're interested in a subject area, uh, then I think that it makes it somewhat more straightforward. So in in the class itself, I do actually I'm always and and this is the philosophy of this particular university, as, as you know even better than myself, or better than myself. It's very interactive. It's not just a case of, okay, I'm the lecturer here, and I happen to have a certain qualifications or technical training or, or a knowledge, so to speak. Yes, that's important, but it's also about, about the interaction of it and getting the students to think through a lot of the analytical uh, difficulties. And also, on top of that, from there, I do quite a lot of, and this connects with the thing of communication and leadership, I do quite a lot of role plays. And I get them, how would, they, how would they act in a certain situation? How, let's say whether it's a business situation or a governmental situation, and try to get them... And this is something I learned at acting school, so again, we can find linkages. Um, what's, your, what's your objective in this particular moment? What's your objective? What am I doing in this room with you right now? What is my objective? My objective is to explain to you, and, and perhaps to anyone who watches this, a little bit about the course, and of course a little bit about myself, and that's what the students are trying to do in the class. They're trying to think, in this particular business situation, or governmental situation, or non-governmental situation, what would be my objective in this situation, and how do I, uh, how do I try to achieve that? So. Okay, thank you. Uh, when you would give students who want to study leadership, for yes. example, or who study already leadership, uh, a recommendation, what would be the... Uh, most important recommendations. So I, I would say recommendation is is that you're that whenever you're whatever you're doing in in work or as a student, but also in, in professional life, it's always have to have that clarity of thought when you're when you're looking at a particular issue, a particular problem, is to think it through as deeply as possible, and then when you've thought it through and you've looked at all the all the various possibilities and all the uh, all the evidence, so to speak, all the empirical data, you could say. You then to come to a decision, taking a decision, being able to take that decision is a very important part of leadership. And then perhaps subsequently, if in light of evidence, later on you discover that there's some important new evidence which makes you need to change your decision, then of course you need to be, need to be modest and be able to think that through as well. But once you've taken a decision, 
to move forward with it and not to necessarily be thinking, oh, have I done the right thing, have I done the wrong thing? No, you take a decision. Yes. And again, one could say not just organisationally or business in the business world or the political world, that's again in one's personal life you could say that, that mm -hmm. once you take a decision, you take a decision. And by doing that, that inspires confidence in others. Mm -hmm. And that's why leadership... Now, you might say certain leaders, oh, they're so naturally confident. I'm sure they're not always. I'm sure they have their great doubts. I mean, you could look at the Nelson Mandela's, the great people like the Mandela's of the world, or you could look at various other political leaders like the Tony Blair's and others who come across as very smooth, very confident. But I'm sure in, in, in their more difficult moments, late at night, in the middle of the night, they themselves are, are thinking, oh, gosh, am I doing the right thing? Yes. And, and so, uh, so I think what it's weighing everything up and then once you do it, have it, and therefore by having that conviction and that confidence, you're going to inspire other people, I would imagine. So that's a, that's a yes, that would be a recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Anthony, thank you very much, thank you so much for Luke. this little ch uh, chat. And uh, yeah, I uh, wish you to enjoy your classes here at Castle Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.